um, I hope everyone's following it. And maybe another example of that is 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 basically and going back to this buying of of the euro, right? So what I did was I typed in some keywords, and you can do this yourself as well on 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 the discussion room. Um, and so you know, because I think it was Jarbread that you know mentioned something about me uh, being a buyer or, or or you know maybe just getting a bit confused, I guess, on um, why I said I may have been looking to buy the uh, the euro, right? Which I wasn't. I was just making an example. Oh, Elliot Wave. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is that? Um, now I just want to show you, and so you can read. Yeah, you know the 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 the, the posts um regarding my bias and the changing of my bias from buying euros back in the beginning of uh 2021 and the fact that it has remained right my bias has remained short for you know basically a year and a half since you know this period here so since we were since I said I was short and changed my bias, which was January the 27th, which was around this period here, All right, January 27th. So it's around here. This is when I said that I was changing my bias to go short, yeah? And it's because, I said, I've been reading a few articles. It's 27th of, of, of January 2021. And it seems like there's a bit of a shift between buying euros and selling dollars in the short term. And then at the time, you know, I was looking at that one to three month period, right? It looks like Europe is lagging behind the US in terms of the vaccine rollout, therefore projections for GDP who also lag. So for the short term, at least, I'm looking to see if there are buying opportunities for the dollar as long as data supports my bias. And that's very important. So the data uh, to look for is growing GDP. Uh, for the dollar and lagging for the euro. The ECB are potentially being forced to do something about their unwanted strengthening of the euro. Again, please go to the Eurozone channel to see the latest data and uh, news, which means they may have to find a way to weaken the euro, right? So um, at the time, uh, there was inflation um, uh, problems, so they wanted to actually, you know, weaken the euro. Uh, the Fed has been winning the currency wars, so the currency devaluation over the past six months, but now that is translating into potential growth for the US economy. So again, any positive GDP and inflation news from the US supports the buy dollar buyers for the short term. And that again continued, right? That continued on for uh for a year and, and yeah. So that continued on for about another 18 months up until today. Right. So I haven't changed my bias. Now, along the way, I have been tempted and I, we have we have had discussions about potentially buying the euro. Right. And I'm going to go through it and show you those conversations. But I never did. Right. And uh, the guys like uh, Ken will vouch uh, for that as well. Ken's here. And uh, Ken was actually trading against me at one point. He was actually buying the euro. I think he did a thousand pip trade or something like that on the euro, didn't you, Ken? I think at one point, I think it was earlier this year. Yeah, Euro New Zealand. Right. So Ken ended up buying the euro, but I ended up still shorting the euro, right? So during that during that period. But the point is, is that we're talking about reversals, yeah, and changing and the changing of biases. So again, just looking at, you know, the, the, the comments that I've been making. And I said, there's a, or techni there's, a, there's a nice technical CPR at the time. So that was around February 2021. Um, but the only issue is that it is against currency fundamental sentiment. The euro pound has just come out, sorry, euro pound, euro GDP has just come out as negative. So personally, it's hard to buy euros right now. But if you're technically driven, then that's a great setup. Yeah. So... There's that. Now, I just want to preface this with buying the euro against the dollar, by the way. Yeah, the euro can be a buy, could have been a buy. Um, and it was a buy at certain points against other currencies. But against the dollar, yeah, euro dollar, it wasn't. And again, there were moments where I was, again, scratching my head and I was thinking to myself, hmm, possibly, right, looking for 
not not looking for confirmation bias, not being, you know, snow blind by my, you know, being married to um, a euro dollar short because you you can't be right. You shouldn't be. So you have to consider all, um, you know, all of the fundamentals, all of the the, the narratives, etc., that are going on. But let's uh, just go through this. It's not going to take too long. I just want to, you know, just demonstrate the point. Yeah. And the points and the conversations. So I said, I like it. Well, well done. Just a case of deciding whether you want to buy the euro. And I did the thinking face because I'm just, you know, I can't tell you not to buy the euro. Right. I was just, but, you know, for me, it's not something that I did. Right. So it's fundamentally why are you buying the euro? Right. And why are you selling the New Zealand dollar in, in, in context to, I think I was asking someone that, why are you buying the euro? Uh, Ken was talking about buying the euro, I think somewhere around there, potential CPR. Um, and I said to somebody, I can't base my buying decisions on technicals, uh, although uh, there might be a pullback property taking. For me, that's not enough of a reason to switch to buying euros. Right. Again, everything I'm saying today, I was saying exactly the same thing back then. It's not you can't be technically driven. Right. So as long as the US dollar fundamentals continue to come out positive, then that supports dollar buying. Euro, Europe is lagging. And this was in March, yeah? So Europe is lagging behind the dollar and the pound. So until they catch up, yeah, my bias is short at levels of Cobra. Um, right, so that might, you know, I said my, my bias is short at levels of supply, yeah? And just basically watch, you know, the trading videos to understand the shift in dollar fundamentals and sentiment feedback. So again, the videos are all there. Just referring to them, they're all here. If you want to, if you want to watch them, yeah, just find the the, the time, the uh, the date stamp, and you can watch the uh, the videos. So going back to again, just certain um, comments. I said I think once the euro has some good data, I'll probably look for a buy euro buy, but not against the dollar as that is a harder trade. Maybe the Euro Swiss, Euro Yen would be my preference, right? So if you're going to buy the Euro, yeah, after, you know, and looking at, you know, some positive data, if some positive data does, does come out, then it wouldn't be against the dollar because the dollar had, you know, strong data, right? You want to trade it against something that is uh, weaker or devaluing, yeah? And that was in April 2021, and then uh, I think Saidi says uh, prices made it for pulling back fair value or hunting liquidity. There's no positive news that's supporting current buyers of the euro. And there's 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 certain there's certain times, right? So that's the the, the 19th of April, right? So let's go to the 19th of April, uh, 2021, which would be somewhere around here, right? So you've got this large move, right, around here. So around March, April, this is where we had moves that were going to the upside in fact i remember losing a quite a few trades uh during this period uh trying to go short um but again drawing traders in yeah as prices were going higher right what were what do you think the institutions were doing at the time they were they understood that prices were probably going to end up somewhere down here in the next few months so as prices were going higher they were buying the dollar for cheaper yeah that's all they were doing. Buying, 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 cheap, 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 cheap. That move was totally against fundamentals. Was it? Was it, Lawrence? Was it? Oh, against the fundamentals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I get what you mean. Yes, it was. That move was. But, 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 and, and, and you're totally right. Um, it was against fundamentals during the time. So you remember this. And I remember because I was going short, you know, here. And I think I lost maybe about four trades I think something like that. I made a little bit as well along along the way you know what I mean some break-even trades and some small wins as well but I remember losing I think that's maybe about three or four in a row or something like that up here but when you say it was going against fundamentals in terms of when you look at what the what the range was and in, in terms of when we talk about range we talk about an auction right this is where I started saying yeah in January yeah, that I want to be a buyer of the dollar, meaning that I want to go short. Yeah, and that I want to just basically look at supply zones to go short. Yeah. So between a bargain area and an expensive area for the dollar. Yeah. The institutions and 50% is fair, is fair value. Yeah. Of that. The institutions, remember, they don't trade like 
retail. Retail will go down into the low time frames and you know place their stop losses at you know 10 pips, you know, stop losses, and then wonder why they keep getting stopped out and saying that you know fundamentals don't work. We know, or you should know by now, that you know you've got iceberg orders. The the the, the smart money, the big money accumulate over time. Yeah, this is what they do. They accumulate over time. Yeah, they want to buy the dollar for cheaper, right? Because all of the liquidity is to the upside and it draws in and who's buying, you know, who's pressing buy, following trends and the smart money are literally taking the other side of that, right? They're, they're, they're taking the sell side of that because they understand they're looking three months ahead, six months ahead, and they know that prices are going to are likely to be down here. But the point being is that even though price was going higher, right? I didn't switch my bias. I didn't say, oh, well, you know what? I should, I should have, uh, I should have started to go, you know, low on the euro. No, no, no. Because that's not where prices are likely to go. So again, just following, you know, the, the, the thread, continue to follow the thread. Um, where are we? So just a word of caution, right? So this was basically because I know at the time, I know there were people that were looking at price in the short term over the weeks and those few weeks and, you know, maybe a month or so. And I get it, right? Because when you're in it, when you're, when, when, when you've had three or four weeks of the Euro going higher and higher yet, yeah, Leon is telling you, you know what, he's short on the Euro. It's like, well, what's Leon talking about? Price is going higher. Like, what does he know? You know what I mean? He's, he's been wrong for four weeks, five weeks. Well, again, we look at, we tend to look at things, hopefully, you know, over, you know, the, the, the over a few months at least. So the point being is that I just said here that, you know, just a word of caution on buying the euro. The expectation of the euro growth is strong, but the data has to support the narrative. Yeah, that was the caution. Now, I was not, you know, if, if the data supported the narrative, I would have maybe switched my bias to go long right on the euro. Yeah, so at the moment, it's really about timing the, poss um, the possible good news um, will come. As we get closer to GDP first quarter data, right, release, look at the forecast on trading economics, forex factor, et cetera. If the forecast is positive growth and price is falling, then it may be the banks accumulating uh, buyer positions uh, while they liquidity hunt. But the point being is that I hadn't changed my bias yeah to buy the euros although i was open to the idea if the data supported the narrative and at the time of course the data did not support the narrative yeah this is just more this is more of a quote um and then we were talking about what about resentment uh you still keep buying euros i think you must have been referring to um maybe ken i think that's probably around the time that you're buying sam uh said that uh, basically he said uh, against the yen, probably buying euro against the yen, yes, but not we would, would not be buying euro against commodity currencies or the dollar, right? And Jarbred, I think, backs that up. Someone tell me a fundamental reason to buy the euro against the dollar, please. So again, it's like, why would you be buying the euro against the dollar? This is, you know, 24th, the 7th. So this by that time prices were you know down here. Why are you buying 24th? Sorry, this would have been July 24th. So this would have been here. Why are you buying the 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 you know the euros against the dollar? We all pretty much knew probably from a probabilistic perspective that prices were going to go to the downside, right? Which they eventually did over you know the next month or two or three. So again, this is not you know, me changing my bias every time price goes against me, you know, whether it's 100, 200, 300 pips. Um, Samaita was talking about, uh, with you on that book, uh, would love price to go higher before we start selling. Technically, we were in a cheap area. So that was probably uh, uh, September, uh, it says, which is why City was tactically buying the euro. Yeah, and basically tactically means in the short term, you know, they were buying the euro. But, you know, medium to long term, I think their forecasts were to the downside. And uh, again, just Mr. Diligent was talking about buying the euro against against the Swiss or the yen, right? There was a nice setup on the euro Swiss last week. Hi, everyone. Today's group call talking about, I'm talking about CAD by Bank of England. And I, again, I mentioned here, euro woes, right? So it wasn't, I wasn't saying, you know, uh, to, um, I was just basically, you know, explaining that the euro still has woes, right? 
by the end of the year. This is November. And then into obviously the end of 2021, I said it's for me, it's hard to tell because of the time of the year. I said, let me have a report. You're typically strengthened seasonally in December at the moment. I think it's more dollar profit taking. Yeah, a pullback to short the euro, buy the dollar at better price. So that's what I was thinking. So obviously, again, around December, prices probably were pulling back. Yeah. So let's go to December. Right. And indeed, this is probably what was happening. Right. So December, you saw a bit of, again, another auction. Right. Between buyers and sellers. And then um, just a pullback to buy the dollar. Right. So you got remember that massive, that quite big stop hunt there, which turned out to be another buying opportunity, a nice CPR right there. Yeah. And the prices continue to fall further. Yeah. So you're seeing this play out over the space of the year. These times here, I had not changed my bias. Right. I had not changed my bias at all. Again, just one more page to go. Um, and let me just scroll down a bit. Yeah, so it's not, not too long. Um, da, 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 da. So I'll scroll up a little bit. I think this is a conversation between Ken and Jarbread. I think Jarbread said something about, yeah, so for me to stop buying a euro, I'd have to be confident that this is going to be the way uh, the West wants and which is long-term includes a message by China. Okay, Taiwan, he mentioned. Uh, right, so I said, uh, I will start to be a buyer of the euro. So this was in April of this year. Right. So again, this is just confirming that I haven't been a buyer of the euro. Right. But I will start to be a buyer of the euro once the data starts to show a recovery. The ECB are in a very difficult position at the moment because their economy hasn't even started to show any sustainable growth with high inflation. All they can do is try to talk up the euro. So this is when they were, you know, on the um, on the interest rate hiking cycle when they were basically jawboning the euro to try and get it to appreciate right and that's basically to try and convince everyone that they are taking sorry yeah they're taking policy measures to strengthen the euro because you know a weak euro pushes up inflation and they were having inflation problems just like everyone else but it was being i guess um exacerbated by the fact of a, of a weaker euro too so but looking at the data yeah and what the first quarter is likely to show, right, the effect of the Russia-Ukraine conflict on the economy, I think it'll take it'll take at least another couple of months before I look to buy the euro. And again, that's not set in stone, right? It depends on, on the data and the, narr and the narrative. So that was in April, so a couple months, few months, took us into probably June. Then you reevaluate, right? I was reevaluating whether I wanted to buy the euro, which you guys know. No, I didn't, right? So, of course, there could be an agreement between Russia and Ukraine at any minute. So, that would also be the trigger to buy the euro. So, obviously, we were in the midst of the Ukraine um, uh, and Russia conflict. So, uh, here's a comment that I said, I think it might have been, I don't know who, it was, who I was replying to, but it says, it's very tempting to buy the euro, right, based on the perceived undervalued narrative but, it, but I just can't bring myself to do it unless there is data support in the narrative, right? So again, I, I couldn't justify the reversal, right? I couldn't see a, a total reversal in buying the euro, yeah? But I have to see the data support the narrative or at least a change in sentiment based on the end of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. So that would have been something that would have been, you know, and again, we all know that that is still going on, right? Um, and then I said, hi, everyone. At the moment, you're seeing an effort from the ECB to talk up the euro by signaling. So this is still April, signaling that they may rate, uh, hike rates in July. Yeah. So be mindful that uh, although that this is possible, it will be dependent upon how well the economy is doing and also how long the war is going on for. In the short term, my best guess is that the, the market will start to buy the euro, right? So buy the rumour. But always remember that the data has to support the narrative. Therefore, before I start to buy the euro again, just considering buying the euro, of course, I'm not being totally biased against not buying it, but I'm being very cautious. I'll need to see proof that the economy can, can support the increase in rate hikes. Otherwise, rate hikes will likely have a negative effect, negative effect on the economy before it's had a chance to recover. First quarter GDP announcement is on the 29th of April. So that would be the trigger to buy the euro or continue to sell. Yeah. So that was pretty much what we were looking for. Again, we can go to a price chart there. So the 21st, the fourth this year, 
21st of the 4th, 21st of April. So April was 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 here. Did get guess a bit of a pullback. Right, let me just delete that. All right. So from April 21st. Well, actually, no, we didn't. All right. So we continue to head, you know, down, I think. And I was just saying that probably you might start to get some sort of pullback as a narrative. But again, nothing changed, right? We didn't see any, really any positive data out of Europe or anything, and prices still kept going lower, right? Still kept going lower. So you're seeing, you know, over time, put that one there, right? Over time, me not change my bias to buy the euro, right? So my, I said, in my opinion, this was in, in you know, mid-May, so in my opinion, the euro strength is temporary. Yes, they may be hiking rates, but the key is their GDP number. Second quarter data would be very interesting. But until then, it seems as though the market is buying euros and pricing in the value based on future hikes. So again, from that was from mid-May. So mid-May, again, you saw prices pull back, right? And again, overall, I ended up being right because prices pulled back to a cheaper area where you could short the euro, right? It went from pretty much 107s down to, you know, beyond parity. So, and again, this is a probability game. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm right all the time or anything like that, right? Nothing, I'm not, I'm not trying to imply these things because this is just the probabilistic nature of things working out, yeah? I could have been wrong. But again, going back to my original point is just, there has to be, the data has to support the narrative for, you know, me to really consider a reversal, yeah? And at no point, and at some point, there was obviously, you know, a, a fork in the road where you had to kind of wait for the data to support the narrative, and it hasn't. So um, for me, there is um, just, you know, examples, examples after examples after examples, and, you know, of me switching my bias, or me not switching my bias and continuing to um you know remain short over the past year and a half right you've just seen it and you've seen the trend and this is really the power of maintaining a fundamental bias yeah and understanding when to switch your bias and when not to switch your bias yeah and this is how powerful it can be i'm not saying that you're going to catch every move i'm not saying you're going to win every trade but this is, you've just seen a year and a half of, you know, you know, quick short fire analysis. If you're paying attention, of course, if you were here or you're not here, you know, many of you might not have been here, obviously, during that time. But for the guys that are still here and trading with me, you know, you've been here and you've seen the journey. Right, Ken? Right, Lawrence? I think Igor's been here for a while. Marianne? Yep. You know, you guys have seen the analysis day in, day out, day in, day out as to the reasons why. You know what I mean? I've been short and you've seen it play out. Not saying that we're going to be right every single week. <laughs> yeah. Not saying I'm going to be right every single week. This is not like, well, oh, yeah, the euro's going to go higher this week or the or the, or the, or the, the dollar's going to go, you know, higher this week. It's very, it's very, you know, difficult to, to trade and know what price is going to do week to week because you could be right fundamentally, but prices for maybe a week or two or three could go higher. Right? Don't know but we're looking at medium to long-term. And um, Ken says, uh, wait, we're not, buying <laughs> we're not buying the Euros, yeah. So, I mean, again, as I say, there is there is an opportunity, yeah? And again, all I can do is say what I'm looking at. And if, and if I do switch my bias to buying the Euro, you all will be the first to know about it, yeah? You'll be the first to know about it. And again, it's not necessarily a trade call. And I would like anybody and everybody to challenge my uh, my thoughts and my thesis. Of course, this is not any kind of dictatorship or anything like that. Um, we can agree to disagree. You know, it's not personal or anything like that. Um, and um, but that's just to show you an illustration and I guess, you know, an example of, um, you know, reasons to change my bias and looking at, you know, divergences and the level of divergences convergences and also leading and lagging and taking in all that into consideration when um and things that i talk about obviously in the course and uh you know throughout the um the mentoring 
And um, that's what really I'm looking at when, you know, the, the reasons to change my bias. Uh.